What I got for you today is an informational video. This deal right here, what's this? This is an oil cooler, right? This is how Audi and VW has been cooling their oil for quite some time. A lot of vehicles don't have an oil cooler, so it's really convenient that they do have this, but I have seen this fail before. You see this port right here, that's where the coolant flows through. There's three ports on the back. Now, I'm gonna blow on this. So the coolant goes through this top hole and it comes out that bottom hole right there where I'm touching. You can kind of see how the gasket went around that flat surface if you look closely. You can see what, what we call the witness marks. And a lot of times you can look at witness marks to try to figure out how something was put together. That's just a side subject. But those other two holes right there, let's see, it's this, this one is coolant. The other two holes right there are what the oil flows through. So the hot oil goes through one side and it comes out slightly cooler. It's not going to do a whole bunch because it's being cooled by the oil. I'm sorry, the coolant, the coolant. But uh, that's another subject as well. So, you know, it, where does it exactly come out? You know, does it is it hot coolant? No, that's the whole coolant. It, that's a separate video. We'll talk about where the water pushes how the flow of the coolant through the radiator, the flow of the coolant through the heater core, the flow of the coolant through this. What I just wanted to talk about was, I've had one of these fail before, not on one of these 2.0 TFSIs, not on the engines that I typically work on, but there's not a real good way to show you how it failed anyway, but what I will do is I'll cut it open and I'll show you what's going on inside. What happens was, I had oil mixing with coolant, so sometimes that could be a head gasket. Most of the time, that's gonna be a head gasket. The head gasket is where the, the top of the engine and the bottom of the engine are put together. And check it out, here we are in my kitchen. I've been doing a little bit of organization, trying to get some of this stuff figured out, what I'm gonna throw away, what I'm gonna get sent off to the machine shop. All the camshafts that I need polished and all, all the stuff that needs to to get done, all these cylinder heads that need valve jobs, acid tanked, all that kind of stuff. I don't always buy new. A lot of times I like to keep my local machine shop busy, grow some uh, relationships that way. But this is the head gasket right here. This particular head, it bent valves on the intake and exhaust. You see how they're extended right there? So, this one got pretty shmammered. This is the cylinder head gasket. This, like I said, is where the oil pressure pushes. So the pressure pushes through here and it goes through oil galleys inside the head. That might be a different video if you wanna see. So the oil coming out of these bolt hole areas where the cylinder head bolts would be, that's, see the oil's gonna return back because these, these bolt holes are extra big and there's holes down there in the sides. But if you look closely, these ports right here in between are where the coolant comes through. Now this coolant is pressurized. The oil right here is not pressurized. This oil coming back, this is, this is spent oil. It's the stuff that's coming back down to the oil pump and then it's gonna keep on recirculating. All this stuff keeps on recirculating. But what we have pressurized is this, all these individual rings right here this is the compression has to stay inside these cylinders. So this stays separate. These oil galleys stay separate, right? And oil comes out through here, comes out through here. And then the coolant is gonna come through that small hole, that larger hole, that smaller hole. It's gonna come out through here. You see how there's gasket surface right around here. That's what separates the oil from the coolant, just right there. So sometimes you could have, you know, if you overheated or if something happened, that's why it's really important not to keep on driving your car if you had a bad water pump or something like that. Because this gasket and this aluminum cylinder head will fail first. This aluminum cylinder head can warp really easily compared to the cast iron block. So typically people compression test, they'll, they'll, they'll pump 
the compression tester in the coolant system. Uh, I've got one of those to show you. So you might ask, why do I follow this Naptown Tuner guy? Why do I gotta hit the subscribe button or the like button or support this guy to make more videos? Well, it's gonna be stuff like this. You don't have to buy your own coolant tester. I'm gonna show you in the middle of this video. I could have made this as a separate video, but I'm not gonna put it up to the air pressure right now, but let me just show you how to test your cooling pressure system. This right here is a leak down tester. I haven't showed you how to do a cylinder leak down test yet. This is for something else, it's for a different video. But what this is, is an air regulator built in. You see this pressure gauge right here? You can pop this out. This is made in the USA, by the way, buddy. This is Genuine Matco. All I did was I took a basic, a basic pressure cap and I drilled a hole in it. And this thing, I can take the end of my leak down tester and I can just gently screw it in that cap. I can put it on my leak down tester. I can screw it on my coolant bottle over here. This is my coolant bottle, you see that? So what you would do is you'd screw it on, connect your hose, connect this to your shop air. Before You don't wanna put a bunch of air pressure on it. You would put it down to about 10 PSI and then you would pressurize your cooling system and then you would listen for leaks and look for leaks. So you don't gotta go buy expensive stuff. All you gotta do is buy the leak down tester that you need anyway. And then you don't have to have one of those pump jobbies and all that kind of stuff. You just learned something new. Now this works really well for the plastic cap, but I bet you I could formulate options with all kinds of different caps if I wanted to. Now, let's move on. Before I go ahead and chop one of these open, let me show you, they did even revise this a little bit. You see how this is pretty much perfectly the same exact thing? But if you notice the backside, they look a little bit different. So they switched up the design just a little bit on the inside. So maybe they did see a couple failures in the past, or maybe this bigger port flows a little bit better or cools a little bit better than these smaller ports. I don't know which one is the newer one. Let me see if I can figure it out by the part numbers. Usually you can take a look at this part number. This is 06K117021K. Uh, and this is 021E. So you'll look at the very last. So this one is the more revised and that would make more sense because K comes after E. That's how that works. And that makes more sense because these holes are bigger. So if you want to do a big cooling improvement on your car, maybe you could update your cooler. Hmm, let's cut it open. So I got the cooler mounted up right here. It's on my porch. A lot of times in my videos, I do stuff outside or in the yard just to prove that you don't have to have a garage. I got a big four car garage, I got a vice. There's a lot of different ways I could set this thing up, but I'm just showing you how you can make do with what you got. This is a, a nice battery powered Sawzall, but for the longest time, I just had one that you could plug into the wall. So let's see if this does a good job. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle of this one. I don't wanna cut my guardrail, so I'm being just a little bit careful. Ah, that's probably good enough. Let's take this thing off. Go a little bit more. There we go. Now, of course, I knew this was going to happen. There's very few ways that you can chop this thing open without getting the aluminum particles in the way. But if you see, it's very similar to a radiator. 
you just have stacks and stacks of little tiny ports. You see that? And what can happen is, let me see if I can blow this out to get a better view. Now, first I'm gonna try it like this. See how it's just stacks and grids of small aluminum compartments. The coolant flows through these channels right here and then the opposite sandwiches. So it is pretty hard to see, but the coolant will flow through the stacked sandwiches. Let's see. So like, for instance, oil here, coolant here, oil here, coolant here, oil here, coolant here, oil here, coolant here, and so on, all the way up. So if any small little part of, part of this thing gets a hole through it, it's going to mix the coolant and the oil in this cooler, and it's gonna push out this way, just a mixture of junk, because it's, it's gonna try to mix the coolant and the oil, and, you know, my last car that I had this going on with, I did not expect this. I did not think that that was really a possibility. I just was over thinking it, you know, just, I was just, it's, so I put a head gasket on it first, and then I put a whole different cylinder head and another head gasket on it. And then finally I figured out that it was leaking inside. I was leaking inside this oil cooler assembly. And once I just simply put this little cheap cooler on it all my problems were fixed so i hope that helps someone else out now this was just a quick generalization most of the time yes it's probably going to be a head gasket if you're mixing oil and coolant but weird things like this can happen especially on audi vw they do different things especially german cars doing different things now on my v8 on v8s just for one example they have this coolant crossover tube in the top of the cylinder heads. The, the timing chains are in the back of the engine. If Some of these people know what I'm talking about if you've had any of this stuff apart. There's this little tube that has O-rings on both sides. It's in between the cams on the back of the heads and you can have bad O-rings on just this little crossover tube and you can mix oil and coolant on that on your 4.2s on your Audis. If any of you people can think off the top of your head other ways that oil and coolant can mix, put it in the comments that I'm not thinking off the top of my head. But you know, there, don't just go throwing a new engine in or taking the cylinder. Now, if you let this go too much, now I just thought of more off the top of my head. There's oil breather assemblies. For instance, on the V6, and uh, the, the supercharged V6 is the one I can think of most readily. There's a, oil, a coolant that flows through this, this oil separator, they call it or a breather assembly. It's very complex breather assemblies on these Audis. And since coolant passes through it, internally in the valley, this plastic oil separator can leak the coolant, the pressurized coolant into the oil. And I know a guy at my old dealership that replaced an engine for that and didn't, uh, surprisingly, they approved it as well under warranty but really it was just but if you think about it it was probably better to go ahead and replace the engine if it was a car under warranty because you can't let that go very long once you have coolant leaking into the oil you're washing out your bearings so you really got to address something like this pretty fast and you can't be having milky oil watery oil circulating through your engine for very long so keep an eye on that kind of stuff if you have a coolant leak most of the time, it's not going to be that. Most of the time, it's going to be external. But I want people to be aware of this kind of thing. And like I say, if you can think of anything else that I'm not thinking of, tell me in the comments. This is the type of oil breather assembly that I was talking about. That 
oil separator, some people call it. It is connected with the pressurized cooling system and it can fail internally and mix the oil with the coolant. This sits in the valley. So either cylinder head is on either side and the intake sits on top of it. So be aware, it could be something as simple as this for your coolant leak, mixing with oil, creating sludge, destroying your engine.